I have been here on YouTube for so many years and reviewing so many luxury products and today I'm finally revealing my holy grail luxury makeup. Today is my birthday. Well, when you're watching this video, my birthday has already passed and I was about to get ready. So I went ahead and just pick and choose the makeup that I want to wear today. And I realized how quickly I was able to grab the products that I wanted it. And then I sat down and said, well, what about if I turn on the camera? Because in all these years that I had been here on YouTube, I have never dedicated a full on video to my holy grails. Those products that are my absolute all time favorites and i think this is just the right time it, like i said it was so easy to grab and choose the products that i want to use today yes there are some products that i will be like well perhaps i could do this one or that one so i just went back to my doors and just pick in certain categories certain items that i feel like you know there's some wiggle room right here that this perhaps could work so anyhow friends let's dive in clean canvas today let me get ready here with you starting first primer and if you're new here to my channel welcome welcome to all of you my dear friends i will leave all the frequently asked questions on the description box below as well as all the products that i will be talking about today again on that description box below but in general i'm over 40 years old i'm I usually say I'm on my fourth floor. <laughs> yes, I'm over 40 years old and I do have dry skin right here and a little bit more of normal to combination skin right here where I have my enlarged pores. So to moisturize my face, I absolutely love that Victoria Beckham Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizing and I like to use the shade gold or golden, I think it is. It just has a little tint of gold but it's a product that is going to give you any type of coverage it just moisturizes your skin that's all what it does with a subtle glow now because i do have a large force on this area i like to use a pore minimizer primer and i'm going to go with my latest favorite one that has become my ultimate favorite i tried it pretty much at the beginning of the year and i couldn't stop wearing it is that tom ford traceless soft matte primer now you're going to be like uh, you're you have dry skin and you're gonna use something that is matte well it's not really mattifying it stems the longevity of your foundation or of your base product but more than anything it does blur out the pores and imperfections and if you see a little bit of change on the lighting it's because I do film in natural light I'm just using a very little amount Now in the next category, it's kind of like a multi-use kind of product. It can be used as a primer, as a highlighter, um, as an all-over glow. I like to use it as both a liquid highlighter, but it does have some dense consistency that it actually feels more like a moisturizer. And I like to apply it before going with my foundation. And this is the Glow Last by Auric. And this is the brand by Samantha Ravendel in the shade Selenite. I'm just going with a very, very little amount. You see, it's, it has a, like I said, a dense consistency. A little, little, little goes a long way. And I like to put it on the highest points of my face. It's moisturizing, it's hydrating. And I assume Samantha did it in such a way too because of my understanding is she does have dry skin. I'm honestly trying to limit myself to just one product per category. And although I have other foundations that I absolutely love, they all have different type of coverage, different type of mm, finish, a slightly different consistency, density. Some of them are more long wearing and some not, but like I said, I was about to get ready and I just said, you know what? This is the foundation that I wanna use on my birthday and is Chanel Sublimage. Lessons du temps. This foundation has a very light to medium coverage with a natural borderline satin finish, but the finish of this foundation is it is elegant. That's the way that I can summarize this foundation. There's just some elegance to it, and it doesn't have anything to do of being a 
Chanel foundation. No, it's just it's just the nature of this foundation. And you need a very little amount. As you can tell, it's not runny. It does have some nice consistency because the sublimage line from Chanel does have skincare properties, which you can actually feel it when you apply it. Now this foundation comes with a brush. You can spread it with a brush or with a beauty sponge. I'm gonna go with my beauty sponge and just thin it out. In terms of concealer, I had had in the past a couple concealers that have been holy grail. They will still be, and I will still reach out for them if need be, but everything has changed this year because Chanel came out with a sublimage Le Correcteur U. And this has been a game changer for me. Reason being is because, as you can tell, I do have very dark under eye circles. Blue in undertone, greenish tone, and they are just very hard to cover. In fact, one of my holy grails have been for a couple years now, since the time that it came out. Charlotte Tilbury, this is the Magic Away color corrector. And I always use this pair with some of my favorite concealers, but this year, this baby came out and this has been a game, a game changer. And I know that a lot of people were thinking, well, this concealer in a jar, um, you know, there's foundations that come in a jar too. And that's not to say that I wouldn't like to have had this concealer in a doll food applicator, but at the same time, I don't mind it. I mean, like when I do my makeup, it's not like I'm, I'm not messy. I usually have a little table right here in front of me when I'm doing my makeup in front of the camera or on my vanity where I set my stuff. And it's not that everything is going to roll around and move. Obviously, it's going to be perhaps a little bit harder to take on trips. But, I mean, that's not a big deal. Another thing that I love too is the amount of product that you need. It comes with this spatula. This is pretty much... I'm just going to dab a little more. That's all what I need. So in terms of pricing and the amount of product that I need for these, I mean, it's a no brainer. This little jar will last me at least minimum for a year for the amount of product that I need. I usually use just two dots and you know, that's more than enough. Now I like to let it set a little, just so it kind of like, what you say it macerate <laughs> be under my eyes i know that's a funny word and now let's go for my brows and i'm going with my charlotte tilbury brow sheet brow pencil not only i like the consistency of it but also i love that it's refillable so you don't have to be throwing away i mean like this the cartridge that i have right here is perhaps my number four or five and it's less wasteful when you know that a product like like a brow pencil that you can actually refill it. To me, that is fantastic. And then this shade that I have here is perfect for my brow hairs too. For brow gel, it's also a new product and it is by Patrick Ta, is that brow lamination gel. I will highly suggest to use it a little bit fast because it's not dense in consistency, but it dries really fast as well. And I don't use it as a lamination kind of product usually you have to use the opposite side and kind of like press your brows and then laminate them quote unquote i don't like to use that as such i just really like it just to be super natural fluffy brows now let's spread the concealer and i'm going to be using the brush that comes with the concealer this is part of the magic you don't need something dense you don't need something to dilute the concealer either and another thing about this concealer that you're gonna see in a moment is that it's also brightening. Because it has such a great coverage, when you have a brightening kind of concealer, at times, such can create these, if you have dark under eye circles, and if they are blue in tone or green in tone, the contrast between the white undertone of such concealer can create a little bit of this gray cast combined with a bluish tone of your dark under eye circles. This one doesn't. It's brightening. It, it's a three in one product. It's a color corrector, a concealer, and a brightening kind of product. So what else, what else do you need? I mean, you don't need to use extra product under the under eye area to make it just everything so seamless. 
in terms of contour, none other than Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. And I have here a brand new one because my older one, to begin with, it doesn't have the TF. And this is not a new formulation, but rather Tom Ford this year, they expanded the shade range and they also gave some variation to each of the shades. Prior, all of the shades, they were like deeper in tone just in terms of the contour shade but then on the highlighter shade it was always the same all of them were the same now all of the shades of the highlighters for each of the different shades that they are offering they are a little bit different which i greatly appreciate i'm going to be using a bk beauty 109 brush and i just apply very little amount because this product does have quite a bit of pigmentation so you don't need a whole lot to create this contour shade. What I like about this contour from Tom Ford too is that it's not your typical grayish contour. It's actually just a little bit more neutral. So it's more realistic and not so, it's not like too much because sometimes when it has a gray undertone or a very, very cool tone, sometimes it can give you a, <laughs> kind of like a dirty kind of look instead of something very classy very sophisticated yeah for bronzer i'm gonna go with gucci I absolutely love the blendability of this bronzer, how natural it looks. It doesn't look forced, it just looks seamless. Now you may be wondering why I didn't set my under eye area. Is that honestly with this concealer by Chanel, you really do not need to set it. It doesn't crease, it lasts such a long time. It's such a outstanding concealer. But if I was to set my makeup, usually when I set my makeup, it's also during summertime when I know it's I'm going to be like, so, <laughs> you know, it's going to be so, so hot and I have more makeup than just a no makeup makeup kind of look and that I need to set it or I'm going to be out, um, I don't know, going to an event, etc. Then I go for, I have a couple powders right here. For loose powder, absolutely, definitely that Givenchy Prince Libre powder. This one has a little bit, well, the shade that I have, which is 3 Wellia Rose. This has more of a brightening effect. It's super soft, but it doesn't give a wide cast. I'm going to go ahead and just apply it underneath my under eye area, right where I have applied the concealer. Do you see right there how it's so beautiful and brightening? Oh, I just love, love, love this setting powder. It's super soft too. It's super thin. So if you have a dry under eye area, it's not going to make it look cakey or even drier. Now, in terms of my enlarged pores, I like to use something that it will give me such a smooth finish. And for that, I'm going to be using none other than my beloved Gucci setting powder. And this powder in particular, it does give you these porcelain dull kind of effect and finish to your skin that is not is natural but borderline satin without being shiny there's no shimmer shine greasy no it just gives you this perfected look i mean if you have ever have a porcelain doll you you know what i'm talking about it's just so beautiful and so perfecting and i like to use it right here only where i have my enlarged pores So smooth. Now one blush that I have absolutely been loving this 2022 and that I feel like it has become a holy grail. And I mean, I'm a human. I completely forgot to mention it on my favorites of 2022. It is the Patrick Ta blush in She's Blushing. This shade in particular, it gave me that beautiful pillow talk kind of makeup look soft pinky tone that just looks fantastic in fact 
You know that one of my favorite face palettes of this year has been the one by Charlotte Tilbury, the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette. And as you can tell, they have some similarities. I mean, like they are not exactly the same, but they are a little bit similar. And this formula from Patrick Cha, in particular, the dual ones that they come in singles, they are super natural. You can actually use the cream blush on top of the powdered blush. I know that sounds super like completely off of what we have always here like cream always goes under and then on top powder right but this one no it's created in such a way that the cream will give you not a highlighter effect but just extra glow and juicy kind of finish to your cheeks just a stunning so anyhow i'm just gonna go with this one i love the shade because it's just super super natural and that's what i like to go for yeah you see this just give me dull Kind of vibe without being too pink and it does have quite a bit of pigment so you don't need a whole lot and in particular this shade she's blushing it does have not a super matte finish but rather a kind of like satin natural finish which it just brings everything alive you know it's not like dual and to me that is super important i like to use my blush also on my nose because i feel that when we laugh a smile and we just are flash of you know color we you know we even have it also on our forehead but yeah usually like at least at a minimum right here here and here now going into a category that for me is really hard to just narrow it to just one product so on this category which are eyeshadows i'm going to give you a few that are basically because of formulation not not only because how much i love them but again it's just based on formula first and foremost tone 4 wet and dry formula in a specific the eyeshadow quad in suspicion and you will see why i mean like this i do have the nature of my job here on youtube reviewing makeup i do have a ton of different eyeshadows but you can tell this one is well well loved and anytime that i have used this particular eyeshadow on someone they always ask me what was that that you use on my eyes why my eyes look so beautiful and honestly i I know this is a wet and dry formula, but most of the times I just use it completely dry and I just love the outcome. It gives me this kind of golden goddess kind of look that to me is just so... Uh, just, I, I don't know how to to say it, but it just kind of like puts me in another mood. I absolutely love it and yeah, this is fantastic. Now a formula that to me, Charlotte Tilbury is the one who was pioneer at bringing this formula to the market. It's in a specific herb pop shades now called super pops in certain eyeshadows in a specific the new pillow talk dreams palette i mean this is an absolute dream to use this shade in a specific is just it just makes of your eyes i don't know just like a mesmerized kind of effect it just adds some brilliance and shine that is just so beautiful yet is very sophisticated very elegant and i haven't swatched this baby but let me just show it to you this is suspicion by tom four all these shades are what we will call them satin and if you wet them they will be more of a metallic finish but again they give this very shine effect but it doesn't emphasize those fine lines and i think that is key mostly as we age or if you just simply have more lines on your eyelids or you know they are i don't know like hooded eyes too they are such formulation that they are just not going to emphasize all of that now someone that also brings us a very like an incredible formulation are the astral shades by pat mcgrath and you can find them on her mothership palette so you pick and choose if i have to pick one is none other than the original divine rose i adore her astral formulation I know it can be very glittery, very sparkly, but that's what it makes such a difference on her formulas. And I feel like in a specific Divine Rose, the original, to me, because I do like not super pink shades, I like my golden tones, my pinky tones, my neutral tones, 
but it was one palette that to me it was so easy to be like okay this is not the mothership palette that i was just gonna keep it only for special occasions but not instead the mothership palette that i will use pretty much every day if i want to that i don't need to just be like oh no this is just for very special occasions because it's too dramatic this one in a specific is not and again i'm talking here about the formula the astral formula if i was to go with any eyeshadow palette from natasha i will pick this one the glam palette to me is the most complete palette even more than the Viva palette. I enjoy the Viva palette, but for some reason, the Glam palette is what it gives me everything because I do have, you see, my pinky shades. I also have my neutral and warm tones in this section right here while I have my very frosty cool tones on this side. So I have a combination of a little bit of everything. And although it may look like a boring palette, to me, this is another very well done, sophisticated palette that I'm more than being just a cool tone palette to me is a very neutral palette because as you're able to see you have so many different shades natasha and nonna really excels with her matte formulation to me they are so easy to blend to apply i don't need to work too much they are never 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 patchy and i mean what else to say about her metallic shades her shimmer shades they are just wet looking they are transformative they are just so beyond beautiful that to me is one of those brands that I can rely on and that I'm never going to be disappointed with. And another formula that I really love, and I really love this brand because every year they have decided to just launch one big palette, which I really appreciate. They are not so overwhelming us with big, big palettes. They have multiple launches throughout the year, but in terms of eyeshadows, usually it's just one big palette per year, but it is the innovation. And I'm talking about Huda Beauty. Every year she does not only a different kind of eyeshadow palette, but she's adventurous. She always brings us, you know what? There's something new going on in the industry. Let's just like a sprinkle it on this palette and see what is the reaction of everybody else, of all the beauty lovers out there. And that is something that I really appreciate. But look at this sorcery right here. This is a wet formula that just looks Oh my goodness, just ah, oh, mm, incredible. Like even these marbleized shades, they have so much dimension. And again, I mean, like if we're talking about her matte formulas, they are very, very beautiful. This rose quartz palette made it to my best of 2021 because also the matte shades, and for being a purpley tone kind of eyeshadow palette, is none that I feel like, oh my gosh, it's super hard to work with. It's super patchy because let's be honest, everything that is cool tone, everything that has a purple undertone or a blue undertone, it can be super, super hard to work with and it can become even patchy on the eyes. And then the last formula, that I love is by Vanity Makeup and it's a brand that is not, I mean like not a lot of people talk about it. And I remember when this came out last year, again, another palette that made it to my best of 2021. This is the only palette that you pretty much will need. You have your cool tones, you have a black, you have a very light shade, you have your neutral tones, your warm tones, you have your matte shades on one row, and then your sparkly shades. These three shades right here are more metallic, while these ones are more satiny. I mean, this palette is just incredible. The packaging to me, it's kind of like a mix between Gucci had a baby with Pat McGrath. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you see how it resembles a Mothership palette, but at the same time, the cover is kind of like something that I would have expected from Gucci. And again, look at these wet eyeshadows, effortless. And the biggest thing about these eyeshadows are that you don't have any fallout. You don't have also kickback on the matte shades. They are just absolutely stunning, wet <laughs> <laughs> they're just incredible incredible Annie did an amazing job with this palette and I wish she would have come out with more palettes like this her brand is very well recognized within the makeup artist industry but you know in this influencer kind of world that we see so many brands here showering us with so many things not that many people talk about vanity makeup but I have to give it to her that she did a standing 
an outstanding job and I can only wait to see something that perhaps goes and plays a little bit between the pink tones, a little bit of mauve tones, something I like to say the Rose Quartz palette by Huda Beauty but with the formulation of Vanity Makeup. I will love, love, love to see that. Okay friends, so then what I'm going to use for my eyeshadow look today, I think let's just be you know completely to what I have grabbed first and it was my tone for eyeshadow quad in suspicion usually I go first with this shade and I apply it above the crease and you will see this is again a satiny kind of palette that when you use it dry is soft it doesn't emphasize absolutely anything and then I'm going to be using the same brush and I think that's also the simplicity that I like when I'm using a quad that is just so simple to create a look. I'm going to go with the deeper shade and then I'm just going to take it on my outer V and this deeper brown shade I think is what it makes everything just work so well together because it's a little bit more cool tone therefore if everything else is a little bit more dure, more gold, then it just gives so much dimension to the rest of the eyeshadows in the palette. Then in Honest True, this is what I do when I grab this palette, is I just go with my finger and use this shade, which is kind of like coppery tone, and I just apply it inner portion all the way until it meets with the other eyeshadow. And you also have to think that these palettes too, in the way that you Perhaps one, if you're wondering, well, how I pick a palette that you showcase today, mm -hmm. I will say go with a color story that attracts you the most, that you know that is something that works well with your skin tone, your undertone too. And now, again, using my finger, I'm going to go to the lighter shade, which is more cool tone champagne. And I'm just going to dab it right at the center. You see? And that's it. <laughs> This palette to me is just everything and more. Give me a sophisticated look. And like I said, everybody, every time that I use that, everybody asks me, what are you using on your eyelids? What are you using? It's just this. And with a BK Beauty 204 brush, I'm gonna go to this shade and then I'm gonna take it on my lower lash line. And then we take Sonia G Flat Definer, you know, a favorite brush. This cannot, <laughs> I mean like I have Three of them I cannot live without it I'm just going with a deeper shade and I'm just gonna apply it on my lower lash line just on the outer third just to add a little bit more of dimension and as you can tell no fallout and that's the same thing that I find with all of these eyeshadow palettes that I was showing you there's no fallout except for that one by Pat McGrath which the astral shades, they are glitter, you know, like very finely milled, but there's some fallout, so I would highly suggest to use a glitter glue, something that, you know, is just going to keep it up there. But it's not that you're going to find like a super glittery mess, but FYI. In terms of liquid eyeliner, I do have two. One is my double-ended tone for eyeliner. Super easy to use. And same thing with a roller eyeliner by Benefit in the brown shade. To me, this is a perfect brown shade because it's not warm, it's not cool, it's completely neutral. It goes every time that I'm doing a look that is, you know, that I want it to be more every day, that I really do not want to be like, oh my gosh, look how much makeup she has. I go with this one. It's just so perfect. And then whenever I want to intensify, then I go with the one by Tom Ford. I'm going to be using today the one by Benefit because. I like how it pairs really well with this eyeshadow look with a suspicion palette. Plus, right now it's still early, so if I want to change the look a little bit later on tonight, I can, and then I use the one by Tom Ford. For my waterline, if you follow me from the very beginnings of my channel, you know how much in love I was with the gel liners from Marc Jacobs. They were my favorite ones, and unfortunately, Marc Jacobs decided to stop producing makeup. So that left me with like, okay, to start looking for something else. And 
I love throughout the last, I think, two years, the Satin Kajals by Victoria Beckham Beauty. These are ideal, perfect to do a smoky eye look, to use on your waterline. They are definitely multi-purpose in those terms. And then this year, Hourglass came out with their waterproof gel liner, which they are so alike to the Marc Jacobs one. They are like finally the answer to my prayers. But because I have been using this one the longest, I'm going to use it for my waterline. And this one is in the shade, oh my gosh, I sharpen it so much that it doesn't, I, I don't know what shade this is, but I, it will be on the description box below. I promise you that. And in terms of mascara, I absolutely love my Shantekai. This is the longest lashes fossil mascara. This is the one that has the peptides and I absolutely love everything about it. I love mascaras that they give me volume, length, separation, that they make my lashes look as if I'm wearing falsies. Look at that, just, what was it, like three passes? And my lashes, they look like if I have falsies, it's beyond. Let's go back to the eyeshadow palette and I'm going to use the lightest shade. And I'm just going to apply it on my inner corner. And whatever is remaining on my bubble or cream highlighter, none other than the Super Loaded Tinted Highlighter by Westman Atelier in Peau de Peche. It, it's a very interesting formula because it's cream, but at the same time, it also feels kind of like a powder, but it doesn't go like a powder, and it just gives you the most amazing, natural highlighter glow from within without being this beaming highlighter that really tells it all is like okay you're wearing so much makeup you're trying too hard to glow this one doesn't it's just perfection and you know what now that we're talking about Westman Atelier I have them here in front of me I forgot to talk about my absolute favorite cream blushes and they are by Westman Atelier I absolutely love these blushes in a specific, the shades Popette, this one right now that the cold girl makeup look is going on right now, I will highly suggest for you to try these. They have full pigmentation. You need just a little bit of amount. And the beautiful thing about these blushes is that they are long lasting. Not all the blushes, liquids are necessarily like tints and not necessarily all of them. They will last you for a long time. A very natural shade is Chouchette. Also gorgeous. Look at this tone. Oh my gosh. In love. And then another one of my favorites, which is a little bit more peachy coral, is Minette. Look at this shade. Also stunning. I like this shade quite a bit for summertime too. It's so pretty. It's so, so beautiful. I mean, anyone, pick and choose. And this shade, Minette in a specific, has kind of like a little bit of like a golden undertone that just looks fantastic. Or powder highlighters, oh, none other than Tom Ford. And these duo highlighters that are also incredible. They come in different shades, different tones for different skin tones. And the formula is just so sublime. It's just so pretty. It's never forced. It just looks super natural. And it's more of like an illuminating powder. It's not really a highlighter. It just makes your skin look wet without this cast of stripe of color, right? Oh, or pigment, not at all whatsoever. So absolutely amazing. So in love. Oh, this is just perfection. I'm going for lip liner, also Victoria Beckham Beauty. I think her lip liners are incredible. They have the right tone. They do have the right formulation that they actually 
stay on for the longest time and they are just non-tagging they are beautiful the shade that as you can tell use quite a bit is this is shade number two yeah shade number two this is so gorgeous You know, my friends, one of my favorite categories are lipsticks. I adore lipsticks because they can change so much your look when you have just like bronzer on your eyelids. Lipstick can set the tone. So what I decided to do in this category, kind of like to what I did with the eyeshadows, is categorize it by finishes. So first, starting with something that I don't use too much, but at times I like to use it it is a matte formulation and to me the one who does the best matte formula is lisa elrich with her velvet lipsticks although they are very fragile they are gorgeous i mean like when you take them out of the bullet you can really see the velvet finish they are non-drying they are very comfortable but they give you that matte finish without being thick either without emphasizing the fine lines i think she does the best my only recommendation is if you live in a hot climate put it in the fridge and try to keep it away from the sun because they will not melt but they will be you know easy to break so that is my suggestion right there now another kind of like matte formulation but at the same time glossy but super long lasting i mean like you can eat a very greasy meal and they will stay there are the Chanel Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue by Chanel. One of my very very favorite shades is Intense Caramel and also the red one in... Oh, I don't remember the name but I will be putting it on the description box below because I'm sure tonight I'm gonna be using a red shade. So these ones are bulletproof. To me, if you want something to last all day long without drying your lips, that they look fantastic and that you can go and have a dinner and not be feeling like, oh my gosh, all my lipstick is gone, these ones are it. And then in terms of a very light kind of formula, which is a like to a lip balm, but, but they have a little bit of pigment well actually enough pigment i have to say that the chantecai lip veils and the shade that i adore is tambodi is a perfect kind of cool tone nude shade that goes well with so many different looks and i really love how hydrating they are again they are more of like a lip balm but with pigment so and another one that is kind of like the Chantecai lip veils, but I feel that they have just a little bit more of pigment are the Rouge Coco Flash by Chanel. They are incredible. If I have to pick one, 100% boy, I have purchased it so many times. This is my kind of like signature lipstick for me. This this is this is just simply everything to me and then a very comfortable matte formula that doesn't look as matte and as intense as the one from lisa elrich it's a little bit borderline kind of like a satin formulation although they are always described as matte are the lipsticks by tom ford and in a specific sable smoke as you can tell, I mean, like I had created a death ray. <laughs> I absolutely love these lipsticks. I love their longevity. Yes, you have to reapply them, but it, it's just comfortable. It's beautiful. It has full pigment. It's not too thick, and it's the perfect natural finish kind of lipstick. Something that again is not too shiny, but it's not too matte. That is not drying. It's just perfect it's just right there perfect and then for an amazing satin finish Clé de Peau in a specific the shade Tronfan Tony oh my gosh I'm in love with this shade so um, I mean a total obsession it's just such a beautiful shade I love also tantalized tan but that one is more a little bit warmer in tone while Tronfan Tony it's a little bit more neutral something that I can wear with multiple makeup looks Let's go ahead and use the one by Clé de Peau. Oh, this color is fantastic. Just stunning. What a color. What a beautiful, beautiful shade. Now, in terms of lip gloss, honestly, I have two lip glosses that they are 
favorites complete complete favorites um once again tom four i know in the buff but also chanel <laughs> two of my top contenders here and i'm gonna use chanel because i love the dog food applicator of this specific lip gloss also the lip glosses from chanel they come same thing with Tom Ford, they come in so many different shades and so many different variations, but I feel like Chanel has more variations, more shades. There are more, there are differences between the shades of Chanel, while Tom Ford, um, they did a first launch and then they, they didn't expand the shade range and they only brought actually my favorite Tom Ford lip gloss, which is in the bath, but then that's it. So I have three three lip glosses from Tom Ford that I really love. One of them actually is a gorgeous orangey tone, but it's discontinued. So it's like, okay, are they going to keep going with the lip glosses or not? Hopefully they are because it's an excellent formula. But anyhow, I'm going to go with Chanel because again, it's a formula that is consistent. I love this like thicker double applicator too that is very much... Uh, like it hacks the lips so beautifully. They have a beautiful shine. And I love this shade. I mean, I love all the shades. I love Noche Moscata. It's gorgeous. But this shade in particular, it is, does it say it here? 712. It's something honey. Again, I will be leaving it on the description box below. It just gives so much shine to my lips. It looks like my lips are so full and juicy and... It's not as sticky, not thick, nothing of that. Finishing powder, this is my all-time favorite finishing powder, and you know it. You know it. Can you hear it? <laughs> it is the Meteorites by Guerlain. Oh, I absolutely love them. They come in different shades. This was in a specific, a limited edition one, and perhaps my favorite one, or I should say my all-time favorite one. I think this was from... 2019 every year we got used to see the meteorites but then this year we didn't we didn't which it was kind of like what happened now i cannot believe it i don't know if they are now just going to be doing it for a springtime but i mean any any of Rulan meteorites are incredible i like to use my la mer brush and i use this powder again as a finishing powder to buff everything on my face i don't like to use any kind of like harsh kind of um, brush to do this and it gives me oh my gosh that ethereal glow <sighs> that is just amazing boom perfection simply perfection to set my makeup none other than charlotte tilbury this is the airbrush flawless setting spray the beautiful thing about this setting spray is that it doesn't change the finish of your makeup so if you have a glowing makeup it will keep it like that if you have a matte makeup look it will keep it like that and it will make your entire makeup last all day long the only thing that i don't like too much is the it's actual spray i think it needs to be just a little bit more fine but other than that such a great great product so here you have it my friends this is my final look these are my absolute all-time luxury makeup favorites my holy grails these these are it i mean you got it you got to take notes because um to me um, these products are the ones that just shine among so many other products that I have in my collection. And not to say that I don't love other products. I definitely have, you know, like other products that I will say like these competes with this one. Definitely, I do have those products. But yeah, I mean, in summary, whenever I want to have like the best makeup look, the best day, these are the products that I go and grab and that I rely on. Okay, my friends, and I think this makes it for this video. And now I would love, love, love to hear from you. Which are those 
makeup products that for you are holy grail status. Let's continue the conversation on the comment section down below. While you're at it, and if you haven't done so yet, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. It would be amazing if you can come and follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. If you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, share with family and friends, and if you're not done watching my content, I will be leaving a couple other videos right here that I'm sure you're going to love. Until the next time, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye.